Hey everybody and welcome back to In The Round Podcast. This is episode three. Uh, my name is Jen. I am the Not Naughty Knitter on Ravelry.com and welcome back. Um, I know it's been a while. I apologize. We've had a lot going on um, personally with sicknesses and work. Um, it seemed like as soon as my son got over something, I caught it. As soon as I got over it, my husband caught it. So we seem to be okay right now, knock on wood. Um, but I just wanted to kind of touch base with you guys and show you what I've been doing. Um, I guess the good news about being sick is that there's been a lot of time to knit and craft. So um, I've got some stuff that I finished, some stuff that I've cast on, and then some stuff that I've purchased. <laughs> um, I usually don't, you know, go out and go crazy with, with purchases, but um, a lot of these companies are companies that I've never heard of. So maybe they're ones you've never heard of as well. Um, but I'm kind of wanting to show you what I purchased and give you guys an honest review about it. Um, these are a lot of places that somebody somebody on Instagram followed, shared a post or whatever, and that kind of led me down the rabbit hole. Um, but a lot of cute things. I just kind of want to show you guys what I've purchased. So um, enjoy. So the first thing um, I want to show you guys is kind of the main point of, of my podcast in general. I said in the first episode, and I think I repeated it last time, was that I wanted to reach out and into the community and branch myself out into my skills. And one of those things were socks. Um, I had tried previously maybe two or three years ago to knit socks and um, I'd gotten up to right where you would start a heel construction. And I don't know if it was the pattern, it was a pretty, pretty elaborate um, pattern or if it was the combination with that yarn, um, I'm not sure, but I just wasn't feeling it. Maybe I just wasn't ready yet. So I really wanted to cast on socks in 2017. Um, and so I had some beautiful yarn. It was from Biscotti Yarns. It's a Canadian company. I got it at Stitches um, in 2017 and um, in the watermelon um, colorway. And last time I showed you a big blob of yarn because unfortunately I was um, showing a little uh, impatience and um, started to try to knit without really balling it up or caking up my yarn. And I created a huge mess. Luckily, one of the lovely ladies at my knitting group, Mandy, actually helped me um, de-ball or de-knot that and get it into some nice balls for me. Um, so I was able to cast on some socks. And I know I've mentioned before that I love watermelon. And I don't think everyone really takes me seriously. So I kind of want to show you this first. It's my beautiful watermelon hat. Do you like that? It's cute. It's summery. Um, I got this kit at Stitches, my very first one. Um, I apologize, I could not tell you who the um, the booth was. It's probably on my Ravelry page, but um, it's this absolutely gorgeous, totally perfect pink um, yarn. And then it's got the little white, kind of like a lacy pattern there. You can get it in the camera. And then this beautiful variegated green with a Pico bind off. It was actually not even a Pico bind off. This was an interesting construction of a hat. Um, you basically knit the brim and then in the center you did a row of um, basically a lace that made a Pico and then you folded it over, stitched it together, and then you continued on your pattern. Um, if you notice, one thing I did change and I actually get so many compliments on it is those are actual beads that did not come with the um, the pattern and it wasn't part of the pattern, but it's actually called the seedless watermelon. Well, I like seeds in my watermelon. If I'm gonna have something that looks like watermelon, I want it to look like a true watermelon. So these were supposed to be little um, eyelets with a, a yarn over. And what I did is I did the yarn over, but on the next round, when I went to um, knit that stitch, I actually slipped a bead on it first and then knit it so that the beads sat inside each of the little eyelet holes. Um, I'm so incredibly happy with the outcome. It's a beautiful pattern. It's, you know, pretty much they're, they're kind of staggered in like a checkerboard type of pattern, um, but I absolutely love it. But um, that's on my Ravelry, Ravelry page if you're willing to look at the designer or anything like that. Um, that's my watermelon hat. Are you ready for this? A completed pair of socks yes that is two I did do them two at a time um, these were done two at a time toe up on magic loop circular needle or magic loop circular 
uh, needle. Yeah, I was right. Hmm. But um, so much fun. So the pattern I have for these is I used the um, fish lips kiss heel. So basically you start at the toe, um, knit, knit, knit. And then when you got to the heel, it's a special um, pattern design where you don't have to do like a wrap and turn. It's um, a different type of, of short row. And it's actually really smooth. Um, in there it's actually really cool I like how it actually split between the two um, and I really honestly liked her pattern because it gives you some um, background of the history and construction of socks and you basically have to tra uh, trace your shoe or your, your foot excuse me and that becomes your template of you know you don't have to know someone's shoe size you just have to have a template of their um, their shoe or their foot excuse me and as I was knitting I got to a certain point I'd stick the shoe or the the foot template in and um, when I got to a certain um, area that you had measured as where you should start your heel that's where you started your heel and honestly these fit so perfect I'm so happy with them um, I then just knit up until you know I was comfortable it's kind of like a crew length and then I did a um, ribbing on it the toe though um, this was not part of her pattern um, her pattern was just kind of like cast on how you want and then this is what you want to follow um, this is my first pair of socks and so I felt like it was kind of square on the top I did an increase every other row and I guess a lot of people do it every third row so my next pair um, I'm definitely gonna try that because I don't know they, they fit fine it's not it's not a comfort issue it's just more of looking at them they just look kind of silly to me but um, I absolutely love them they're so comfy they're so warm um, I have a ton of leftover yarn, and so with my leftover yarn, I'm actually making, doo -doo -doo, I'm all tangled in the middle of a row right now. They're going to be fingerless gloves, watermelon ones, and these are actually so cute. Um, this pattern's on Ravelry, it's called the scrunchy uh, hand warmers pattern, but um, the pattern allows these little, like, ruffles so it's really cute I'm super excited about it so hopefully in the next couple of weeks I'll be able to wear socks fingerless gloves and a watermelon hat all together to keep fall in my mind because it is getting a little bit colder um, here in California but again I just wanted to show you my socks because these actually took me 13 days from cast on until cast off uh, or bind off um, I'm just so proud of them. I completed my goal for 2017. So yay me. What about socks? Um, so there's that I finished. What else did I finish? Um, so this is the Brighton cowl. I have not cut my yarn, so sorry. Um, so it's not 100% completed, but it is off the needles per se. Um, all I have to do is graft it um, together and then do a really nice... Um, blocking on it I suck at blocking so uh, I think that's probably why I haven't w uh, woven the ends or seamed it together because I know what comes next is I'm gonna put in a pile for blocking and I'm gonna get just totally bummed that I'm not blocking it but um, I will block it <laughs> because it's so beautiful and I want to wear it um, just the stitch pattern here is going to block out so pretty and show that beautiful variegated yarn um, the yarn again is from Miss Babs. It's actually a Brighton colorway, and that's exactly what the um, pattern was named for. So finish that. That's off the needles as well. Let's see, I have a special project that I was actually absolutely love, um, lucky to to get to be a part of. Sorry, I've got some. I have two cats, and they're kind of like running around the area. So uh, I'm trying to make sure they're not stealing any of my projects to show you. So um, there's something called test knitting or sample knitting. So as a, as a designer can um, write a project, a pattern, and you know, although it works in their head and as they're knitting it, it works fine because they're the ones who wrote it. A lot of times they'll ask for test knitters who, um, you know, want to test it up for them. Basically knit it, help them edit any of the um, technical errors, if their stitch counts don't match in the pattern and things like that. Um, 
but there's also something called a sample knitter. So if you ever go to a convention, um, there are tons of beautiful samples knit up all over the booths and things like that. But a lot of times these designers and, and yarn dyers have so much going on in their own lives and running their business, they don't always have time to do all of those things. So a lot of time they will um, ask for help. And um, I was actually given an amazing opportunity to do a sample knit for a company called Crave Yarn. And this is probably some of the softest, most squishy yarn that I've ever used. Um, so I was actually allowed to uh, sample knit this up for her so she'll use it in selling, I guess. Um, I have it in a plastic bag so it's a little bit noisy because I de-haired it. You know, when you're knitting, you get little hairs in it and stuff. Um, I de-haired it and I have folded it up, stuck it in here, and I haven't touched it. So um, let me open the bag. So what this is, is um, it is the terrain. Let's see if I have a good picture. It's a terrible picture, it's a black and white, but it's called the terrain. Um, it is a scarf. And what we ended up deciding to do is um, it's got these beautiful pattern repeats that make a chevron pattern. And um, one of the things we wanted to do was make it one, a wrap, so make it larger than, um, than the pattern originally designed for, kind of make it a wrap, you know, bigger size, but also do a um, double of the pattern repeat. So um, I'll show you in a second, but basically there were three columns of chevrons we doubled that to be six. So it's a little bit wider and it's much longer. But I don't even know if, honestly, on camera, you're gonna be able to tell how absolutely beautiful, not only the yarn is, the drape as well as the stitch pattern is absolutely gorgeous. So, like I said, this thing is massive. I can't even hold it all the way around myself. But I'm gonna stand up and see if you can see a little bit of that chevron pattern and just the drape in this thing is absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna try to, hopefully that's showing up on camera. It is this absolutely beautiful, true blue, royal blue color. Um, it is absolutely gorgeous. And um, I do not have it blocked. Um, I'm sending it to her this week, back to the designer, or excuse me, the uh, yarn uh, company. And um, they don't want us to block it because it basically just gets messed up in shipping, so they're gonna block it. So right now, unblocked, my measurement is about 70 inches. So I'm excited to see how big it actually is once she blocks it. But um, it's hard to see, but at the end, the chevrons actually make these little points. So I'm really excited to see how that points out um, the yarn, you guys. So it is Crave yarn, and it is so luscious. So this is her uh, Thoreau, sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Um, base and it is silk and yak and it is heaven it is so soft so easy to knit with um it didn't split or or fuzz up or anything like that um just absolutely gorgeous so so beautiful i just i can't say enough good things about it it's so beautiful the color is just so rich. Um, you know, sometimes with dyers, you'll get a little bit of the color on it. Nothing like that. Um, again, it was just so amazingly beautiful. The halo on it, as you know, you knit, sometimes just moving the yarn will cause a halo. You didn't lose the stitch definition. So um, absolutely gorgeous. I am actually really sad to see this go because it was quite a bit of, of time going into this uh, project, but it's so gorgeous and I really hope that she loves it and, you know, it helps her out with, with showcasing this yarn because it is absolutely beautiful. You guys should check it out, craveyarn.com, um, if you don't know them already. So, I think something dropped, so let me grab it. Oh, it sure did. So last time I think I was about to cast on this project, but I have officially cast on. Um, this is one of the many wraps that I got from Stitches. And I'm not sure if I'll be able to truly show this out because it's kind of in that like scrunched phase. But, um, and I wish I had photos because unfortunately the one thing about this pattern is that I guess it was a mystery knit along. 
So I have like 17 pages of a pattern, but they're broken up into um, clues. So I'm on clue two right now, but um, the point is there's no photos on the actual pattern. You'd have to go on to Ravelry and look, but this is called the um, Hoana. So let me show you the name of the, the thing. There we go. The Hoanaya, I think. It's basically, I think originally another name for it was um, Around the Island. But it's going to be this absolutely huge, gorgeous, matches my shirt, tell what my colors are. Um, I do tend to go to blues and colors, but um, this absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous wrap. So you can already kind of see it starting to open up and give me this beautiful um, definition. And it's got beads on it, so you can kind of see the sparkle from the Japanese glass beads. Um, so this one was from Stunning Strings, stunningstring.com. Um, great, great little pattern kit. I think this was like $40 for two huge skeins of yarn. Um, the pattern was included on a little Ravelry download. You got stitch markers that you need for the project. And honestly, I got a bunch extra, or at least I haven't had to use them yet, so I've used them on other patterns um, or projects. And you've also got the um, glass beads. So you got a lot of cool stuff. Um, so far I'm loving it. Um, probably one of the biggest projects I've used for like a round because um, I think each side, cause I'm using on two uh, circular needles, each side is like three or 400 stitches now. So it's a big hefty one. Um, I don't usually tend to take this anywhere with me. It kind of stays next to my bed. Um, just because when I'm at night, you know, at bed at night, I want to start knitting on something. I don't want to carry that around with me and screw something up. I can usually only do one side of the um, of the two sides at a time. So basically, what you did is you kind of started in the middle, and then you've kind of grown from there, and you're going out this way. So um, I don't want to screw that up. So I'm kind of keeping it at home. Um, uh, knitting wise, I think. I have one more, um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm still working on my husband's squid hat. Um, I'm not going to bring that out because I have not touched it. So, I mean, I'm working on it as in it's in timeout because I've had so many other things to do, but I am still working on this massive, um, this is the Cracker Jack scarf. Um, unfortunately, I lost a lot of steam on this because of the fact that we kind of had a bad season for the San Francisco Giants. So it didn't really give me motivation to um, continue knitting it, but I will finish it sometime. I've got thousands of ends to weave in because I don't know how to carry my yarn up. Plus a lot of them, it wasn't like one or two rows. It was you were carrying it up 10 rows. Um, but come to think of it now, looking back in hindsight, it was all inside because it was a tube. I could have done it no problem. Um, it just wasn't something that I had understood I had the skill to do at the time. So there's that. Um, next, I think I am at the um, show and tell of my purchases. There is one more thing I want to grab real quick. I'll be right back. Hold on. Hi, I'm back. So this actually goes with my uh, Cracker Jack um, scarf. My husband for I think Valentine's Day or my birthday, um, got me tickets to the San Francisco Giants Stitch and Pitch. So it's um, a game they pick once a year, usually in June or July, to do um, a knitting night. So, I mean, anyone can go to it, but if you want to be a part of the um, experience of the Stitch and Pitch, um, it's a little extra for uh, the package because you get a cool little um, gift. Well, this year's gift was this absolutely cute little baseball statue, and I'll zoom in on it in a second, but it says 2017 Stitch and Pitch, and the ball itself is made up of stitches. Isn't that cute? And then this would be a um, knitting needle all the way through, and then this one here is a crochet hook, um, and down here it's got a little tag that has the um, San Francisco Giants symbol, and then in between the two up here, is a little hole um, and they said that was for your you know holder stitch holders um, or stitch markers 
kind of small though like I can barely get my finger in there but I mean absolutely adorable so let me see a little this one's the knitting needle all the way down or no this is a crochet hook and then this is the knitting needle the point on the bottom and there's the little hole isn't that cute it was a fun little night um, the area we were sitting in had a bunch of knitters just knitting away um, so that was super fun thing to do so you guys ready for some retail therapy I guess a lot of people uh, places call it happy mail um, whatever I don't really know I think it's fun so um, first off I know last time I spoke about my um, circular needles and and I talked about having a um, a binder to keep them in well the binder was just kind of a little big for me although it's a great thing um, I wanted something a little different so I actually found this on Amazon um, I think it's like Tommy cat or something brand wise but um, it is an interchangeable knitting case it's got cute little cats on it so I mean how could I go wrong right there but it's got two zippered sides so I'm missing a ton because I've got so many projects going on right now but on one thing whoop, tons 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 of little loops for um, knitting needles and what I was actually able to do is um, instead of especially for a lot of the smaller needle sizes like this side over here I'm losing all my stuff on the other side because I opened it um, a lot of stuff on this side they're the bigger loops and this side had smaller loops but um, I was still able to the majority of the time get both sets of the two uh, interchangeable needles in the same hoop so like this one on here on the top is both of my four um, size four metals the next one's my size four um, wood the five so on and so on all the way down and on this side um, I was able to do that as well because they are so big so I loved that at any point I can carry this with me and have all my needles with me no problem um, the other side's a little messy right now so I'm just gonna throw this out of here but this is the other side the other zipper so on these side you've got two little zipper mesh things so I've got um, the locks to lock the key in I've got the little stoppers that stop them if I just want to use it as like a stitch holder from this side is where I was actually holding my um, cables so what I've done um, and I need to redo it I was messing around and taking stuff um, but like this one says 32 so these are my cables that would make 32 inches and what I did is I wrapped them around into a coil and then I put a um, just like the mini binder clip and I wrote 32 on it in permanent marker so I did that with all of my um, cables and actually sits in here really well because you can flip them around and actually has been working really really well for me to be able to carry all my knitting needles my circulars with me um, especially good for knit night I throw this in and that way if I'm there if somebody needs something I've pretty much got my whole stock there with me so um, really awesome I really do enjoy it they had a bunch of different patterns and actually um, I looked for a friend the other day and there was more patterns that weren't like cats or um, anything fun but I'm a crazy cat lady so I was cool with it so there's that let me these are all my other cables you toss these out of the way so um, another thing I purchased um, were some stitch markers we'll make sure I have them all one two three four five I think this is all of them I might be missing one and you'll see me like jump up yep, there it is expect me to be prepared right so um there's some awesome things going on lately trends with stitch markers is cute little mini foods and little um characters and things like that so um i wanted to get some of them and i know um some of the big name ones are super super miniatures who has absolutely gorgeous stuff um but i actually found a sale from another lady um called uh i'm gonna butcher the name Indonesia charms 
Um, I'll link that in the comments below, but she had a sale going on for her birthday. So it was like, I don't know, like 25% off or something like that. So I ended up getting five from her. Um, now these are all made um, after you order them. So there is a little bit of delay and I'm sure it's like that with all of them unless you get like a um, ready-made stuff. But these were not ready-made. Um, these she actually made specifically for my order, which was awesome. So it did take a little bit of time to get to me. Um, I'm in California and these are actually from Mexico, but um, didn't take too long, you know, to go through customs or things like that. But I had ordered five from her. So um, let me get up and show you. So I love anything green and anything um, clover because I'm Irish or I believe I am. Um, <coughs> excuse me, but this is a little, I mean, it's actually pretty big, but it's a um, ombre cake. So it goes from light green to, down to a darker green. And it's got a cute little clover on top and it's sparkly and it's a little cake. It has a little lobster clasp. So absolutely adorable. Um, s'more with little melty chocolate. Um, look at the texture on this. I don't even know if you can actually see all of that, but the texture is absolutely gorgeous. And the marshmallows like the chocolate is melted. How awesome is that? And the marshmallows actually have glitter and sparkle. No lobster claw. A blue peep. I mean, come on. Sugar, candy, glitter. Awesome. This little guy is so cute. He's a little gingerbread man. And I don't know if you can actually see, but um, his little buttons are actually like red and green little like peppermint candies and she's actually really good if you find her on Instagram she actually does little tutorials and shows her how shows you how to make all of those so it's actually really really cute and interesting to see um, this is actually one of my favorites it's a little donut but it's a Pegasus donut you know Pegasus from Hercules or Greek mythology I thought it was so cute it's got little wings on them and everything absolutely adorable I was so happy with those um, they're just so cute and they actually look really really good she's got um these are more like the fantasy ones besides the obviously the um peep and the uh s'more but her stuff online she's done tacos she's done sushi you know she does custom orders i've seen her do like necklaces out of donuts for someone's name um so check her out i'll put her link um if i can figure that out on the, <laughs> in the description um absolutely gorgeous totally totally love them Another thing I got, and it actually came with a charm, was it was a combination um, package with, um, it was uh, Peach Queen Yarns and Little Bit Delights. So um, I love Beauty and the Beast. I've told you that before. Um, I've shown you my knitting bags. My purse is a um, Judy and Burke Beauty and the Beast bag. So I do love Beauty and the Beast. But um, it was a cute little combo theme. So we've got a little bell cupcake stitch marker, absolutely gorgeous. And then this absolutely gorgeous yarn. It's so soft, it is um, sock weight, it's her Manny sock. It's 80 superwash and 20 uh, nylon. It's 100 gram skein, 400 yards. This is called the Girl and the Rose. So I love that it's this beautiful pale yellow it goes into some bright reds at the back here. You've also got some speckles of green. Inside's got more green and red. Um, absolutely gorgeous. I have a shawl that I want to make for it or make it with. Um, but I'm hoping to contact her to get me a um, skein of the green and just have that as kind of a contrast color. Absolutely gorgeous. It is so soft, so squishy. So this is um, Peach Queen Yarns. She's honestly so cute. Uh, it's Jessica. She's on um, Instagram. She's on Etsy. But she does a lot of self-striping and um, Disney stuff. So much Disney stuff. So, I mean, she's on my list of favorite um, dyers because I love anything that is Disney. And, I mean, she does cute little, like, I um, can't think of it off the top of my head. Like, this one's definitely not self-striping, but most of her stuff is where she'll have um, Gaston knit, or no one knits like Gaston. How adorable is that? And then it's Gaston's colors. Um, I just saw the other day she had um, Radcliffe 
from, or maybe that was today, I don't know, um, Radcliffe from Pocahontas on there. Told me so many great, gorgeous things. So um, check her out. And then I know um, Little Bitty Delights does a ton of, of cute miniatures and um, absolutely gorgeous work. Cute little, like her hair is the chocolate frosting. She's got a little rose. Her dress even has like a little dip in the front um, for like kind of the, the curve of the dress. So gorgeous, gorgeous um, collabora collaboration. Say that 10 times fast. Um, and I was really happy with, with these, how they came out. I'll put them in my drawer here. Another thing, I told you I went kind of crazy. Um, so, I got a hair in my eye and I just cannot get it out. <sighs> this is from Slip Stitch Studios. So I've got a couple things from them that I want to show you. Um, this is a needle nook, I guess. Um, and basically it's a place to hold, a lot of people use these for double points. You stick them in here with your project hanging down like socks or things like that and then there's little claps in here there's three of them maybe if i line it up correctly three of them um to hold it in but what i liked about it is she actually had a video um on her facebook a facebook live video where it showed how to use it with um circular needles like a long circular where you basically put them in and then you wrap your circular back on and clip it inside as well and it holds it all together um, what I also liked about this one because I mean there's a bunch on Instagram there's a bunch on on Etsy and I'm not knocking any of those but I really liked that this one actually has a zipper on this side so little zipper um, you can always put the extra needle you can put a darning needle in there some stitch markers I really liked that it's got some nice support to it and I liked that there's a coordinating fabric so um, this one is um, Next Generation, Star Trek. I'm a huge nerd. I grew up going to uh, Star Trek conventions. My brother wanted to speak Klingon and all of that. So um, I grew up with these guys. You got, you know, Will, Will Crusher right there. So um, you got Data, you got Worf, you got Jordy. You know, I loved these guys. So when I saw this, I was like, all right, I'm going to grab that. Um, but inside is also coordinating um, Starfleet um insignias and all the different you know um klingon and Vul you know vulcan all the different um i guess race symbols um so not only does she have cute little things like this she also carries I'll start with this one amazing drawstring bag um perfect little size for socks not only does it have a handle it has a drawstring so your yarn's not falling out inside is a coordinating fabric this one has cute little cats on it it says crazy cat lady I told you I'm a crazy cat lady I love that it's got a square bottom and it's canvas so I don't feel bad about putting that on the ground because it's canvas it's gonna hold up as well as it's dark so um, I don't know I feel like it's gonna protect it a little bit more from hair or things like that but one thing on the inside I wanted to show you if I can is even in this small size let me turn it inside out she has little pockets on the inside so there's two pockets here so you can put your um, extra needles you can put a pair of scissors um, I use little the little knit kits the little plastic um, knit kit that has uh, you know a um, um, measuring tape, stitch marker, scissors, all of that's included. It's got a little counter on it. I keep one of those in here usually. I don't have it in here, of course, right now, but um, I usually keep it in that little pocket because then I know where it is. Um, so cute little everyday size. This is what I usually carry around projects with. And then you've got this massive bag. It's the same fabric, same company. So this is the Slip Stitch Studios. Um, guys, I can't even tell you how big this thing is. This is huge. And not only is it just that tall itself, but it actually has an extra thing for the drawstring. So this would be great for a huge Afghan, a big blanket, whatever, because you're going to have so much room just on the top as well coming in. Um, you can cinch it up. 
can cinch it up with the stuff inside so that no one can get in there. Um, I can't even explain to you how much is in this thing. You've got the canvas on the bottom. I'm not going to show you that because it's covered in cat hair. But you've got your black canvas on the front. I have got one, two, a big one, this smaller one, and then there's a little one here for like a pen or an extra needle. Inside, you have got one, two, three, four ginormous pockets where you can be sticking your um, yarn balls so that it's all organized. You also have little, um, I'm gonna pull it out so you can kind of see it, a little loop where you can feed your yarn through. She also usually has them come with, um, I did not add it on, but a little smaller tote where you can put it in here and clip it in and it's got like um, kind of water resistant fabric. So you can put a water bottle in here, things like that. Huge, huge, huge bag. So I got both of these and the stitch um, or the little um, needle minder from Slip Stitch Studios. On Instagram, every um, Friday she does some kind of sale. But one thing I truly like about her stuff, and I, I got those ones when they were on sale. Um, I will say there are more pricey or bags than, than what I normally would go for. However, the quality on them is amazing. They're absolutely very thick. They're sturdy. I mean, this big bag stands up on its own. You know, I mean, it's, I mean, it's bent over right now, but it stands up on its own. I mean, look at, compared to me, like that's huge. So if you're looking for a big, big bag, check them out. Um, but she does a lot of custom yarn or not custom yarn, custom fabric. Um, Trying to think of ones that she just done, uh, Game of Thrones, where she'll have a designer um, make custom fabric, and then she'll do like pre-sales for it. She does swift um, covers in the fabric, all kinds of great stuff. She does little uh, pattern magnets where it clips on and you can move it throughout your pattern. A lot of really great things. So you should check them out, um, Slip Stitch Studios. Another one I have, um, I did a, I'm almost done, I promise, I promise. Um, I did a uh, review for this company. Um, I loaded it onto their website. I don't think I ever shared it on my podcast, so I will review them again. Um, but Yarn Pop, yarnpop.com. Um, a lot of these are older prints, so um, if they're not on their website, I apologize, but she's got some gorgeous, gorgeous prints on her website right now. But yarnpop.com. Um, again, these are an American made bag, all their materials are, and um, really highly made, very good quality. Um, there's a couple features I really like about it. So this is the carry all, it's got a big old nice strap and the strap is actually adjustable so I can make it smaller, larger. Um, it's actually detachable as well if you didn't want to have it on there. Um, Inside, you've got three rivet holes on the front on this one, and inside, you've got three little coordinating. Um, inside, it's kind of a canvas, but they've got three, I mean, you'll see them down there, three um, places right underneath the grommets for your yarn that's the same outside fabric. It's got this beautiful purple um, zipper, and what I like about it is it has a yarn groove at the. Your yarn can be here. So basically, I have reservations at first of using something with a grommet because that means that like my pattern, where, where does my project go? I'm really confused and, and I don't want to put it through the zipper. So what you do is you can feed it through or not at all. It's totally up to you. But if you were to feed it through and your project's out here, when you're done and you want to put it away, you put your project in, your yarn comes up through here into this little groove. So the zipper stops a little bit short. That way it's protected from getting stuck into the zipper. Um, so I've got at least, I have three of her sizes right here. So I've got this one, which is the big Trekker size. I've got, this is her double size. Um, this I believe is a current fabric. It's this beautiful red kind of um, mandolin-y type thing. Um, but it's got two grommets on it. There's no pockets on the inside of this one. It's a little bit smaller, um, but this would be great for kind of a scarf or a little bit bigger um, shawl or cowl. Um, this is perfect for socks. So this I believe is an older um, pattern. 
print, but this has one grommet. Um, this is where I have my fingerless gloves, my watermelon fingerless gloves. Fits perfect in here. I've got two half balls of a skein of yarn in here with no problem at all. And again, all of her bags that have a zipper have that um, zipper groove where it's not going to catch and I can have it slip through. So um, check out Yarn Pop. So I've got two different bag companies there. If you're looking for some more project bags, I can hook you up. Um, I think that's it. Oh, I have a surprise. Um, so I've told you before, my husband's super, he's awesome. Not only is he awesome, he's really supportive of my podcast, my knitting. Um, he loves that I have a little hobby. Um, he loves that I craft, whatever. But he's always been very, very supportive of it. I told you guys he surprised me by taking me on a trip to uh, Stitches. Well, um, our seven year wedding anniversary is coming up. Yay! Um, in the beginning of October. And um, he gave me some dates and said, hey, take these off from work. Um, I'm not going to tell you where. I was like, okay, that's fine. So me, I don't like surprises. So I kept asking questions. Well, where are we going? Are we taking a plane? Are we taking a boat? Are we taking a train? What are we doing? And he's answering all these questions. And then he made some comment about needing a passport. And I was like, okay, like you need to tell me what's going on because I have a passport. But if you need to get one, what are we doing? You're not going to spend $200 getting a passport just to keep up the ruse of something going on. He's like, okay. So and he tells me, he's like, check out Knit Social. I said, what the heck is Knit Social? And I pulled it up and I was like, is this Stitches for Canadians? Um, I do not mean any offense to that. It was just something that I knew of. Um, and yes, it is. So it was a yarn convention um, in uh, Canada, in Vancouver. So I'll be doing that at the end of September. Um, I'm so excited. He had planned all these fun things and everything just kept falling through. It was going to be like whale watching, uh, kayaking with killer whales. Um, I love killer whales. Hello. And um, unfortunately, it was something we kind of wanted to do without my son. He's only two. You know, I don't want to feed him to the fish yet. Um, but uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. He, um, unfortunately, my parents were going to Hawaii like the week before and they couldn't take time off of work because we were going to be my husband originally wanted us to be gone for a week um so my mom said you know I, I can't go to Hawaii for a week and then come back and take another week of vacation my in-laws were busy so we um ended up having to change it to just a weekend but I'm so excited uh so I'm probably going to podcast from there or take some video to show you guys um I'm super excited to just one, it's my first time actually going international. How lame is that? That I've never gone anywhere international. Um, but I have a passport. I was going to go and then something happened. But um, I'm excited for that. Customs and, and all of that. Although most people say that's not something to be excited about. But here I am. But um, I'm excited about that. I'm excited about all the different yarn. And um, word on the street is that the grocery girls are going to be there and they're going to have a booth. So I'm super excited about that. I want to meet Tracy and Jody. Uh, one of the girls that I actually knit with on Wednesday nights is uh, their moderator for um, their Facebook group. Um, so I'm excited because I kind of feel like I've got like a little like I'm friends of friends. You know, it's like uh, we know each other from the podcast, of course, but I'm friends with your friend. It's totally fine. We're, I'm super cool. I'm in the in the group. Um, we'll see how that goes. But <clears throat> um, I'm so, so excited to go. And um, like I said, I will podcast from there. My husband's going with me, so that'll always be a hoot. Um, and I'm excited to show you what I come back with. Hopefully I make it through customs. Keep your fingers crossed. Um, but that's it. That's all I have. For uh, this episode of In the Route. Uh, have fun with your knitting, and I will see you later. Bye, guys.